Internet providers. They provide your internet. Obvious statement of the year. You're familiar with the transaction. It's pretty normal. You probably never even think about it. And then that bill comes up and I'm like, oh right, I have an internet provider. But why couldn't I just provide myself with the internet? What do internet providers have that I don't have? Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today, Waste Time asks the question, where do internet providers get their internet? And how would you make your own? I'm sure probably one of the first thoughts people are going to have is, Falcon, you're a bird. Why do you think you can make your own internet and I can't? Well, which one of us can fly? Out of the two of us, which one of us can fly seriously? But is it really possible for me to start my own internet? We'll see. So what does internet mean? Interconnected network. What you're browsing when you get onto the internet is a large array of many different networks that gradually get smaller and smaller into more specific places. Lots of data centers all over the world house all the world's websites, and the infrastructure that connects all of them is owned by a great number of of different companies from anywhere you can possibly imagine on our little planet. That infrastructure ranges from cable wires to phone lines to fiber to satellite communications. If data centers are cities, all of this stuff is the various ways that you travel between those cities from highways to flight. Data has to get around this entire planet. And while in theory, the internet is very open and free, whoever owns that infrastructure kind of has a little bit more control than you might think. That's why a lot of people talk about net neutrality and how important it is because having a federal regulation that says you're not allowed to prioritize traffic or a type of customer through this infrastructure preserves the neutral exchange of information that happens on the internet that pretty much creates all of the situations that we consider ideal. Net neutrality is pretty much always under threat. It's a constant thing that people worry about because as citizens of the world, we all do rely on these very large companies connecting us to the various sources of information that we all well, in this world now need. Information is power, and as we've seen over the course of the last year or so, manipulating information is even more powerful. Can you imagine if Comcast was allowed to tell you what websites to visit? This is why a lot of people are asking the question, what would I have to do to make my own internet? Uh, cause... I kind of don't like that idea. And again, if net neutrality fell, it's kind of a necessity if you actually did want a free and open internet. Well, you have a couple of options. The first is you could become a large company with infinite resources and lay a bunch of fiber. Now, that being said, it ain't cheap. The material itself is relatively expensive, but it's not just the material. You also have to dig up the ground, lay it, protect it, mark it, and license it. Because, oh, didn't you know? You're subject to the same rules that everybody else is, especially if you're providing internet to people other than yourself. I mean, in theory, it might not be as important if you were just providing it to yourself, but it sure would not be cost effective to just provide it to yourself. In theory, you'd probably want to charge somebody for this. And I don't think you'd get anywhere if you were serving a closed internet. With the large companies out there constantly fighting against net neutrality, the only way you would ever compete is providing a service more open than theirs. And let's just go ahead and say this, I can't see a situation where you would do this for yourself unless you were extremely rich or going into business and somebody had funded you. Because for a mile of fiber, including construction costs, which take up the bulk of the cost, averages out at around 50 grand. That's one mile, 50 grand. The U.S. Department of Transportation keeps a database of a bunch of fiber install projects and keeps the cost as information on each of them. The cost can really balloon, with a project in Texas costing $118,000 per mile of fiber. And most of that money isn't in materials, it's in labor. And you aren't laying a mile of fiber if you're connecting to the internet on your own. Frankly, a project like this would probably cost you in the millions, regardless of how much it costs per mile. So let's just go ahead and say this, it's not what I would call a prudent decision to go forward on laying fiber for your own personal internet. The other option is using existing infrastructure, which is currently owned by a company, and simply setting up business through it. This involves making deals with current providers who already have services going, allowing you to use their infrastructure to operate your own services through. Again, this is most likely not going to be very cheap, but probably less than millions of dollars to 
to lay your own pipe, so to speak. And this isn't even taking into account all of the software and various internet protocols that would have to be implemented in order to create a working network. Bearing in mind that isn't necessarily the hardest thing in the world to do, transmission control protocol, as well as the internet protocol, which together make up TCP slash IP, are fairly easy to set up in 2017. It requires less than it used to because a lot of it is now automated. And technically, if you really wanted to make your own quote unquote internet that only you could access, and you could privately exchange information between a few computers in a small area, it might cost you a little less. And you might also so call it an intranet. I'm not sure exactly what method you'd want, because you probably would have to lay cable, and if you're laying fiber between five or six houses, that might be what you might call insane. But you could, and in all actuality, that's kind of what the internet is. A bunch of interconnected, insane networks like that. Not necessarily five or six houses, but a data center here, a data center there. And over here we have Google's offices, and over here we have Netflix's offices, and they're all connected through this massive, wait for it, web of infrastructure that's owned by a lot of different companies worldwide. I would maybe say you don't really need your own internet, and it might be kind of absurd unless you are Bill Gates himself, in which case money means nothing to you. So maybe for now, just, you know, concentrate on supporting net neutrality so nothing like this is ever necessary. The only reason you would really want your own infrastructure to connect to the global network is if people were restricting you from seeing some of the global network. Network. And as long as net neutrality is in place, they can't. But if it's not, I promise you they'll try. I only bring that up because the practical purpose for quote unquote creating your own internet or the infrastructure to connect to the existing one is very, very specific because it's never going to be cost effective. In any situation, would you ever consider it cost effective? But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what you would need to do. Speaking on a micro level, there's a near endless amount of steps in creating your own access point that goes from your house to the larger internet. But on the macro level, it's laying fiber and connecting with a DNS service in some way. Holy crap, is that an expensive way to go about things? I know I've said that a few times, but it's way, 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 way more expensive than could possibly be useful. But now you know. Why would you connect yourself via your own internet? Why would this infrastructure ever be necessary to you? I'm interested in whatever reason you might invent for this, because I have a feeling it could be astounding. Let's meet in the comments and talk about it. Also, if you enjoyed this video, click like. If you're not subscribed to Waste Time, now would be a very good time to do just that. We're going to upload brand new videos all the time here, and we're looking forward to it very much. We thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, and we'll see you next time right here on Waste Time.